Hello, ladies. Hey. Hi. 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 Wow. Look at us rolling right through season two of the Heart of Chat. Yes, yes, yes. So this is episode 30 of season two. I can't even believe I'm saying that right now. Y'all can't believe it. And we have a special guest today. Yes, yes, yes. We are super excited. So this is episode 30, like I mentioned, and the title of this episode is Pursuing Your Dream Career with Confidence. And we have Priscilla with us. We're going to give you a second. Hi, standing. Please Hi everyone. YouTube. Yes, Priscilla. everybody. But yes, we are so happy to have you. Um, you are our first guest this season. So we are super, super excited. So I'd like to let you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about you, and then we'll just kind of weave in the conversations like we normally do here. Sure. So first of all, I'm excited to be your your first guest and number 30. I don't know why I feel that special. Yes. Um, so basically, I, I focus on um, single creative professional women who are looking for more fulfillment and happiness in their life and specifically their career. So often the clients I work with are unhappy. They're mostly 35 up in their 40s, kind of that moment in your life when you're when you've basically done everything right. Mm -hmm. You have the career, like money is coming in, and then you kind of wake up one day and you're like, doesn't kind of feel like success or doesn't kind of feel right. Um, or maybe even, you know, you're like, yeah, like something's missing, right? Mm -hmm. And most of my women also don't really feel like they fit in. There's some like not fitting into the status quo. And uh, so what I do is I just work with them, basically coaching them and going in depth to get really clear with them as to what their heart truly desires and supporting them in building that confidence to make it a reality. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Priscilla. I love that. And Thank it, you. It's, yeah, I mean, I remember, so going back a little bit, a little bit of history here, right in the smack of quarantine, I think, you know, I've shared, <laughs> shared with you a, a few times. So we met in another group in a entrepreneur sort of focus right. by Alicia mm -hmm. and living over existing now it's purpose to service. So Alicia, she just rebranded and I remember there was either, uh, and Jeanette, you reminded me of this this morning because I think I was sharing with Jeanette and Shauna. It, it was either a contest or something we had to post our services. Mm -hmm. And I saw your service about the dream career map. I'm like, what is that? And I remember messaging wow. you. <laughs> and then we had this great phone conversation. Do you remember that? Do you want to talk a little bit about sure. that? Sure. So it's actually the Dream Career Job Search Program. Mm -hmm. And my method when I work one-on-one -on -one with my clients is the My Map to Happiness method. Mm -hmm. So it's like completely, it's two different things, actually. So the Dream Career Job Search Program is I have a method for people to look for work successfully and specifically for a job that they're actually genuinely going to love so that was the program and so the program that linda participated in was my course where i literally teach step by step like every single aspect of the job search from well the first step for me is clarity like if you jump into the job search and you don't know what you're looking for you're going to be wasting a lot a lot a lot of precious time so the first step is clarity like what is it that you really want what is that career that you're actually pursuing and, um, you know, obviously that's where some people start to freak out a little bit because they're like, actually, I don't know what I want. Right. Yeah. And that um, can be really overwhelming. Clarity seems like to be, it, ha it seems like the first step for a lot of um, pursuits in life. I know <laughs> right. with um, working in, with entrepreneurs directly, that's like the first thing. Like um, we have a, a nine-week program with the nonprofit I work for. And a lot of them come in with like, three I three business ideals and it's like mm -hmm. okay so what do you really want to focus on like and they're like totally different they're not even in the same like feel like you want to you know create exercise equipment but then you also want to do spiritual coaching okay Which, right. so what do you really <laughs> well, want to do right now go together so yeah and so and I love that part of helping them get clarity because um I'm mentoring actually right now some budding entrepreneurs and one of them was in a situation like that where she got in and she's like, I don't think this is what I want to do anymore. I'm like, oh, all good, all good. Like, yeah. let's jump in this. I get super excited about things like that. Yes. <laughs> and like we dug and we dug and I and I asked her questions and she had to go in and she had to go like, she had to like literally like just 
really take a pause. And I'm so excited because she figured it out and is so exciting what she's going to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, clarity is so important. And I, I, I always compare uh, dating to the job search. Mm. And it's like a lot of us also date without knowing what we really want, right? And then it gets confusing. And then we get into relationships. We're like, oh, actually, that's not what I wanted or I'm not happy. <laughs> same thing for the job. Same thing for this the job. Fun, but I don't know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it goes from clarity. And then we, from that clarity, then you can tailor and write a really powerful resume that's going to get noticed by employers. And then you are more clear about how, what is it that I need to emphasize during the interview? Mm -hmm. um, and then also when you're networking and you're meeting people, like you actually know what you want, which stands out when people are meeting you because people are going to ask like, well, what is it that you're looking for? Or mm -hmm. how can I help you? And if you're like, well, I don't really know. And sometimes, um, you know, I've also worked with students. So sometimes they're like, well, you know, just any job. I'm like, I'm sorry, that's just not how it works. Yes, mm -hmm. it would be fun to just throw it anywhere, but then you're that's why you're not finding a job. Yeah. I have a question for you, Priscilla, around yeah. the resume portfolio building. I've always been big on building portfolios before that was even like a thing. I've always mm -hmm. I did that when I was a teenager. Any work or anything that I did, any volunteer work, I always kept it in a binder of some sort to Ooh. document my work. I always felt like sometimes we do more than what work requires from us outside of our lives and we don't give ourselves enough mm -hmm. credit for what we involve ourselves in and the best way to showcase our skills and gifts sometimes is by documenting our steps in our work mm -hmm. today with the so many changes with quarantine and COVID season have you found that what is what has stayed the same when it comes to building your portfolio and resume as opposed to maybe what has changed um, with how we need to present ourselves. Mm. So I, I love the portfolio thing. I remember when I was a teenager, my mom would be like, take a picture of yourself at work and like, <laughs> put it, like just prove that you've worked in these different places. Yes, yes. Um, uh, for, um, I'm sorry, I just got totally sidetracked with my little it's comment okay. here. I like that. Okay, so to answer your question with quarantine, I think that, and COVID, one of the things I noticed when everybody started, everybody, there was like a massive like freak out around the job search and it's still there. Um, I call it media um, eliciting fear. <laughs> mm, yeah. And what I noticed anyway, when I, cause I, I, I put together really quickly um, a webinar for my students. And what I noticed is that, oh, like a lot of the fears that are coming up for people around the job search for COVID are the same fears that were there before COVID, mm -hmm. right? It's just now maybe people are, well, yeah, they're freaking out a little bit more because it's like the forefront. It's at the forefront of like what people are talking about. People are getting fired and like the economy. And the way I look at it is always like, well, there's always going to be things happening outside of us that we cannot control, right? So what is it that you can do in your little world yourself so you're not getting dragged in with all this craziness. So it's even, and I know this can be controversial for people, but it's even when it comes to COVID. If you're sitting every day watching the news, you're gonna get sucked into the frenzy of fear, mm -hmm. right? But if you step away from it and you're like, I know people are dying. I know this is what hap is happening in my life right now, but let me take care of myself. Like, let me sh make sure I'm healthy and I'm happy and I'm gonna be okay no matter what happens, right? right? Um, so I went a little bit off, like, it's okay. <laughs> about I was, that's, that's great because that's, that, that will lead into how do you present yourself to right. go getting jobs, um, at this time? Like, it's, mm -hmm. do you feel like the only ch real change is that it's more virtual of, uh, for us to present ourselves, um, for a new position? And there's a lot of people moving around too. Like yeah. they're moving mm -hmm. to different States. They're going where yes. the jobs are and yeah. like, just what's your presentation? Um, have you found it to be any different or is it just the same and it's just uh, virtual to present yourself for uh, new places and spaces? I think so. 
I think so. I think like definitely there's like the setting up of your, you know, all of us are set up in a way right now where we can see each other and like, it's, it's like shoulder level and the lighting is in your face, all those little details, which you can literally just YouTube that and find that information. Um, and then just, yeah, getting confident, getting comfort in, and comfortable in front of the camera. But that's kind of just a setup. That's like the first impression. The employer is going to jump on or maybe you're networking and the person is going to jump on and do I even know how this works, right? Mm -hmm. And then I think like the rest is just really building that confidence around the value that you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I think one of the major, I'll call it a freak out, okay? The, one of the major freak outs people usually have, especially in the situation where all of a sudden they get fired is that for many, many people, they've been working in these jobs for a super long time. And what happens when people work in a job for a super long, I'll, I'll bring in the dating again, right? Yes, <laughs> bring it back. So maybe you've been dating the same partner for a long time and you let yourself go, right? Mm -hmm. You let yourself gain weight or maybe like you stop making yourself look, we'll talk about women, you make, let, make, stop making yourself look pretty or attractive. Um, and all of a sudden, boom, relationship's over. You're like, oops. <laughs> how do we do this again right yeah. or maybe you just pick it right back up it's the same thing for the job search if you're not cultivating like you said the portfolio like a lot of people are like oh I've been in my job now for like 10 years 15 years so no need to update the resume no need to network all those things <laughs> and I always tell my clients even if I'm in a job that I love I'm still networking my resume, if somebody needed my resume tomorrow, it's ready to go. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, you, you don't know things that are outside your control, getting fired, right? Things that are outside of your control, budget cuts, downsizing. And you don't want to find yourself in a situation where all of a sudden this job is over and you're like scrambling to figure out like, how do I find a job? And I think that's where people are really freaking out because there is a fear about this is gonna take months or now there's a competition and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like where I differentiate, differentiate myself when I offer um, the job search program is that I am basically teaching you how to show up and how to find that job within three months. And people are like, what? I'm like, yes, because <laughs> I want you to show up dedicated to this job search. Mm -hmm. And I mean, um, Linda can talk about her experience. Like she didn't come in looking for a job, but she got a lot out of just now Linda has her resume ready to go no matter what happens tomorrow, right? Or she mm -hmm. knows how to really push for, for example, if you want a promotion, like all of these yeah. things, like people just kind of sit back and they think the promotion is just going to fall into their lap. And they're like, well, I never got the promotion. And it's like, okay, but did you put in the work? Did you understand what kind of conversations you were supposed to have? Did you understand, did you even, did you want the promotion out of love or out of ego and status? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, all of these things where a lot of people think <laughs> that, oh, if I just want the job, I'm like, no, are you excited about it? Are you passionate? Or is it, same thing for the job search. When I tell people like, okay, but what's your big why? Like, why are you even applying to this position? I don't know. The position was available. I'm like, eh. okay, I don't do that to my clients. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, look, maybe they need to hear that. Like, wrong. <laughs> <turn that in. laughs> so I can see you with a red buzzer. Priscilla, I see you with a red buzzer on your table and you're interviewing your client and yes. let them know ahead of time when I press I this, we're going to change our mindset about this. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah, so I really, I, I love challenging people because it wakes them up yeah. to what's possible. It wakes them up to the dream of what they really wanted. And I'm like, really, why waste your time looking for something that you think is going to be easy to get when on the other side, you have something you really love. Don't you want to just spend time and energy on what you really love yes. and then see that open up for you? Yes. Um, yeah. And I, yeah, I, I, when I talk about that, I'm like, boom, like I get so passionate <laughs> about it. No, um, that's great. I can, I can tell that you're passionate about yeah. it and it makes me excited because, yeah. um, no, it's okay. It's just the aspect of helping people really uncover like what it is they really want. And like a lot of what we talk about here is not just about, oh, entrepreneurship, because we know there's a lot of women that listen to us that are, um, in corporate America and they're pursuing these careers. I did it for 20 years and then I left it. Mm -hmm. But then even now that I'm in like entrepreneurship and nonprofit space, and now it's a whole different level of 
you know, what am I going going after on this end of the yeah, spectrum too? Exactly. Um, Definitely. Something else. Dang, lost my train of thought. Oh, the I know what I wanted to ask you, and then Linda, I want to hear your experience. Oh, sure, of course. Program, but resume and LinkedIn. Some people use it; they just dump their resume over there. And what I'm learning over the over COVID, I've been learning is that LinkedIn should be used and not just to dump your resume over there. It's like you have information over there, but not exactly the same the same way. You don't present yourself the same way on LinkedIn. And I think you have a LinkedIn group or program. Mm -hmm. I do have a LinkedIn group. It's private. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know they had private. First of all, let me just say, I didn't even know they had groups. Let's start yeah. right there. <laughs> LinkedIn is not a platform that I'm very versed in. Mm. Um, and I'm not even going to say I have a presence. I have a page over there, but I'm not <laughs> present. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. you know, I'm it's, just now learning about it. It's, like, <laughs> Yeah, I I'm always, LinkedIn. yeah, Linda's on LinkedIn. Um, I always say, so it's all about strategy. So for me, when clients are like, okay, I don't have a LinkedIn. Do I have to have a LinkedIn? Should I have? And I'm like, well, it's all about what are, what's your goal with LinkedIn, mm -hmm. right? Because LinkedIn could easily become the professional Facebook and, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's not. So for me, it's like, well, if you're going to go on, if you're going to put yourself on LinkedIn, have a strategy and know why you're on LinkedIn. And when it comes to how you want to present your information, I say like, it really depends. Like some people are just going to plug in their resumes because some people are just using LinkedIn for the job search. And I'll talk a little bit more about that after. Um, but it's like, I like to actually look at women that I'm, I'm impressed by their LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And then I tweak mine based on what I saw in theirs. And mm. you know, yeah. honestly, <laughs> never yeah, thought about like, it like that. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you'll see like right now on my LinkedIn, like some of my jobs, I'm, I've described what I've done, and some I haven't. And you know, that was like a project to go back and like fix that up, and I haven't yet. But that's the thing, like it, I'll say like it doesn't really matter unless you literally are on there to get recruited, and that's I don't encourage that. Mm. And I don't encourage that because I want my women to be empowered in their job search. Mm -hmm. So if you're just sitting back, sending resumes, waiting for someone to come to you, if you're just sitting back, you've plugged something in LinkedIn and you're sitting back for someone to come to you, I, you're not empowered because now the job you get depends on who's going to reach out or who cares to read your resume. And that's not how, what I teach my women. I, I teach my that. women, what is it that you want and go for it. Um, I have a question, Priscilla, yeah. for that. This is, I think, where I struggle at with LinkedIn is I'm a creative entrepreneur since single digit age before that mm. word even came out. And I just don't find my brand and my work and what I represent like that's. I just feel like that's not really the ideal space. Mm -hmm for it and then I've over the last few years people are like you gotta have a presence over there you gotta I'm like yeah but it's I just so I like I said I have a page Ooh. over there but I just don't it just everyone's like oh but it's changed a lot they they're more it's not all about nine to five and it's not all about and I'm like I, every time I go over there even looking at my own page I'm like I, 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 I'm not supposed to be over here yeah <laughs> and listen to that I would encourage okay. you to listen to that because there's a lot of shoulds around social media mm. um, and especially around LinkedIn when it comes to the job search. And I'm like, I'm, you can find work without LinkedIn as far as I'm concerned. And if you are a lot more creative, then there might be another social media platform that really speaks to you where honestly, mm -hmm. I believe that the strategies I teach my clients around LinkedIn, I, I'm sure you can do it on Instagram. I'm a hundred percent sure you can do it on Facebook. Like it's just, the, the reality is that, you know, I'm of the era <laughs> to give out my, I look super young. I'm of the era <laughs> of. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, blessing and curse, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm of the era of the yellow pages. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't even, yeah, you yeah, guys I'm, have that. I'm, I'm we remember. Priscilla, I mean, we're, we're all 40. Hey, hey, you, we wow, are. Priscilla, you really <laughs> impressed me, honey. <laughs> You are, we are here. So we're, yeah. yes, we're yeah. on the same yellow page. Yes. 
Definitely. So I used you to know, keep them when they remember every year right. they used to give you yeah, new sets. I used to beg my family to keep them because I used yeah. to love just going through yeah, them. My, they, they were it was fun, right? Amazing, it, yeah. It was, they, got yeah. Smaller the and smaller. they got smaller and smaller now they're non existent. Yeah. yeah, even the white pages. You could, like, I, I have to tell you a story about white pages. <laughs> tell us. So when I was in university, there was like this guy that I was just so into. And um, long story short, I, he lived in like a different city in Canada. And I went to visit that city once with a group. And I'm like, oh, he lives in the city. What was his last name again? And, and, and then I literally like flipped through the right pages and I remembered his dad's first name. And I literally got on the payphone because that's the era of payphone yep. too. Mm-hmm. And I called and asked to speak to him. And we had like this chat, yeah, white pages, right? Before yeah. cell phones. So it's just. <laughs> that is so cool. No, you took us we back because I love, like I love the phone booth. And mm-hmm. in fact, I would choose the booth versus like oh, remember the when they started taking phone. them out of the booth mm-hmm. yeah. i'm like no i still want to go inside this thing <laughs> oh, isn't that crazy? i know i know and anyway it turns out we exchanged numbers and then like anyway there's a whole story that goes with that but i'm just saying like there's just if you use your if you're if you have that if you're willing to take some risks mm-hmm. right stepping out of your comfort zone I think you can do that in any social media. Just pick the one that you want. Because for example, I'm I'm LinkedIn's my turf, but I also get like the shoulds around Instagram or the shoulds mm-hmm. around Facebook or the shoulds mm-hmm. about this is how you should show up as an entrepreneur. And I've decided, you know what, I'm I'm not gonna play that game anymore because I stepped out of the nine to five status quo world because the status quo is just not my thing. And I'm not about to bring the status quo to my business world. Mm. So I really being empowered is also yeah about stepping into your truth and your authenticity yeah Yeah, your uniqueness which is you know it's challenging like I have my own challenges with it too but it's still like a goal and a vision I have for myself and that's where my other program the my mapped happiness method comes in for women where there it's more about okay let's let's help you get that clarity around what your heart truly desires and then let's get real. Once we have that clarity, doesn't mean all of a sudden there's no fears and we're courageous and we're just going to go out and get it. Because I tell people, like, if it was that easy to pursue a career you love, everybody would be pursuing a career you love. Like, who in their mm-hmm. right mind would be waking up to a career they hate? Well, I, I, I mean, that's my opinion. <laughs> but, that's you know, I think that most people would be saying, of course, I want to wake up to a career you love. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. So then I tell them, I, I keep it real with my clients. I'm like, yeah. And it's not easy to pursue what you really want because then there are fears. And then like, you know, we have all these messages of society telling you you can't, or you're supposed to be unhappy at work or work Mm -hmm. is hard, or you're supposed to be stressed out at work. I hear people just spitting out all these like myths about careers to me all the time. And I need to challenge them and ask them, well, where does that information come from? Oh, somebody told me, who was that somebody? Do you know where they got their information from? And I, I get that sometimes that can throw people off, but it's just like, it's, to me, it's super important that we wake up. Like you need mm-hmm. to wake up if you want to find that career you love. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, purpose. Very true. Yes. Yeah, sure, and, sure. and another <laughs> huge piece of that is self-care and Mm self-love and for me 2020 when (laughs) everyone you guys are awesome (laughs) when when everyone's talking about 2020 was a horrendous year like I was on a phone call the other day and the woman was like wasn't 2020 like just horrible and like it was the worst year of my life and I'm like wow like it was really intense and I'm like and I had to flip it around and say well you know actually really depends on what you were focusing on and exactly I really took care of myself yeah it was our best year I know it was my personally it was my best year Priscilla I don't know if you know real quick short story but I Mm. I lost my husband unexpectedly in 2019 Mm. thank you and it will be two years this March and 2020 was good to me Mm. with grief and awe yeah man 2020 was very good it really it was it's it's selfish of me to say this but I'm gonna say this it was nice that the world was shut down while I was going through 
because mm-hmm. I felt like the world was hugging me okay. and I was able to give myself the self-care through mm-hmm. therapy, mm-hmm. mind, body, and soul yes. to get myself where I needed to be at. And so I, I'm the three of us, I could speak for the three of us. 2020 was good to us. Mm-hmm. The heart of chat was born in quarantine. Mm-hmm. It was really mm-hmm. good to us. So you're right. It depends yeah. on what you were doing. That's- what you were focusing on. Yeah. What you were focusing again, were you sitting there every day watching the media as with these numbers mm-hmm. rising and rising and rising and rising and fear and fear? Or were you saying, hey, like I things got toppled over for me in March. And um I was in a situation where it was just like, what do I really need? And the career world boomed and I could see mm-hmm. career coaches on LinkedIn like, hey, I can help you. <laughs> and I, I even had a friend that's like, you know, push yourself out there. It's time for you to get clients. And for me, it was like, what do I actually need right now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I actually need to take care of myself. I'm not in a space to create space for somebody else right now like I need to actually create space for myself Mm -hmm. and I got into like the zoom yoga classes and I got into like the reading and just the again it was like big question mark what do I need right now to be okay how do I keep myself healthy Mm -hmm. how do I remove myself from the fear mentality and like you know, it's becoming this collective. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the collective unconscious. Mm-mm. Yeah, no. I think I have. <laughs> Enlighten me. So, <laughs> I mean, Enlighten us. us. Yes. The collective, you said unconscious. the collective unconscious? Collective unconscious. Okay. Unconscious. So collective right. unconscious is actually um, the thinking mindset that's shared by the collective. Mm-hmm. and it's it's shared like if you live in a specific city there's a collective unconscious if you like there's just you know you see it different cities have actually different cultures and different ways yes. of being. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. um and like I live in a city right now where the collective unconscious is like well you should by the time you're 30 have a really good job aka government that has benefits and pension plans and you should be married and you should have kids and you should have bought a house right you're in dc with linda yeah. <laughs> exactly right <laughs> yeah exactly and i remember um when i was in like i think i was 35 at the time so yes i'm older than 35 uh <laughs> and i remember just coming back to the city and all of a sudden there was this weird like feeling of I should, I should, I should. And I realized like, yeah, no, no, that's, that's not me thinking, you know, that's somebody else. And when you think about COVID, it's gonna be controversial. Yeah. Well, I think it's controversial. <laughs> so, you know, we know about manifesting mm-hmm. and you know, what we think we bring into the world and Hollywood has been creating so many movies about the virus that takes over and the end of the world and like you can't breathe fresh air anymore and then everybody's wearing a mask and everybody's freaking out and there's no more food and (laughs) sorry Mm -hmm. it's just that I I sit back and I'm watching all this craziness happening and I'm like we created this we totally manifested COVID and this craziness in our world with all the crazy I'm going to, I'm going to be very judgmental, stupid movies that are out there that we're watching. And like, I find that a lot of ways that people are reacting to COVID. I'm like, you've been watching too many movies. Stop it. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Me being controversial, very blunt. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be okay with it today. Oh yeah. Um, we, we, okay with we're it. Bring it. We're bring it. Yes. We, we relate to that. We, yes. we're, we're very I'm careful like, about the seeds very, that are planted. Yeah. We're very careful in our yeah. conversations and how we move about our lives, just mm-hmm. how, how we walk and just sort of that awakening. I think that, yeah. that we've all had in, in one way or another. So, I mean, I think, you know, last year, like, like we said here, that it was, it was one of the best years I had, even, you know, I had family members, we all had someone that we know who may have gotten sick or lost from, you know, from COVID, but it, it's your perspective. And so, I mean, even before COVID, we were going through some changes at work. I think mm. still I shared that with you and how we, you know, it was a reorg. Everybody was kind of freaking out. I freaked out right. a little bit probably because that. of mm-hmm. what was going on around me. 
And I stepped into a new position in March. I'm like, is this really where I want to be? And mm-hmm. I remember having the, this awesome, amazing conversation with you. And I was like, oh, I'm thinking to myself, oh, my resume is good. I've been at my job 20 years. My resume is the bomb. I just kind of got that thing. We were like, what? <laughs> you should see what it was and what it is today. Just from me work of the with Priscilla and her programs, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been like sitting still. Like you said, the makeup was off. I wasn't dating myself anymore at work. Because it's like, oh my God, I'm thinking my resume is a bomb. I'm just thinking. You're trying to get engaged, girl. Yeah, I was, it took me three months to get that thing together. But it was, I mean, I would say too, to add to clarity and tailoring yourself, you got to do the work. So, I mean, fast forward post uh, Priscilla's program, I was able to reinvent myself in my current position at work. Excellent. And I'm, even my supervisor, we're working with a new supervisor, didn't really know him that well, kind of, I was nervous kind of going through, I think I was a month into my new job, Priscilla, when we chatted and when your program started and just kind of taking what I learned from there, being more confident, definitely title in this episode here and our theme today. And I think taking that, and I and I remember I had my review late last year, late in 2020, and my supervisor was like, wow, I just really see you're, you're going to be really happy. I know it's long days. I know you're working a lot. It's crazy, but I just see a pep in your step. So mm. that just instantly mm. like, oh, cool. And I you know, definitely thank you for that because um, trying to, I'm trying to, I'm still working on it. It's inner work, the confidence mm. piece. I'm still bringing it, working on it, you know, building blocks. But I think it's, <laughs> You know, I sort of brought that. And then when he said that, I'm getting the projects that I want. I'm able to craft those projects that I want, the things I'm not so sure about. I'm not afraid to ask questions, you know, to say, oh, I'm not so sure about this. But I told him the other day, you need to come to this meeting because I need you here. I would have never done that before Mm. in a million years, especially with the different personalities. And I'm able to, one thing I did like Priscilla that we touched on was like bringing your personality and your being a dynamic person to who you are and what your job is and things. That's one thing I learned. I was like, I'm not putting that on my resume. I remember saying, I was like, is this okay to put on there? You were like, yes, put it on there. And out. I did. And thank you. I to share that. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you for trusting me. Because I I think a big piece of you getting as far as you did in my program is that you you trusted me. You trusted me and you trusted my process. And I think that's very important when you know, it's always, it's like, a, you know, you have to write the, find the right fit. So even when it comes to interviews, I think it's important that you find like, you're not, it's not just about the person interviewing you. It's also about you choosing them. And even when I'm in a space where, you know, it's not that clear for people speaking to me, but I'm also choosing you as a client, Mm. right? So I'm, when I'm asking the questions, I'm also digging to see like, is this person ready to do the work? Is this person going to trust me? Because if you, if you come in and you're like, oh yeah, let me pay all this money and I don't even trust you. I'm like, how is this going to work out for you? If you don't trust me, you know, you're actually, you're actually going to be wasting your money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a lot about people like when they sign up for different programs or reach out to coaches is you still have to do the work. Like it's not going to just be like, okay, I'm going to do it all. And then your life is going to be great. You still have to do the work and like the process works, but only as hard as like you, you, you do mm-hmm. doing the work for it. One of the things that you said early on was about um, just like choosing like what you wanted to focus on and then how, um, what you're focusing on like really could have affected your whole year and I feel like that's like an important piece for anyone in this like when you're pursuing a career or a job search like are you doing it out of like panic like oh I just gotta get get it done but if you take time to step back take care of yourself focus clear your mind then you can go after something the right way without Mm -hmm. like all the like drama that's going on in your head because then you'll just start grabbing at any and everything yeah this is a good fit fit. and then you're back in the same so (laughs) yes so definitely um you know when I like to take a moment also with my because some of my clients they they're in a space also when they where they want to quit their job right but it's so before you want to quit your job you also want to take a step back to ask yourself what would that what would that look like and am I going to be okay if I quit my job Mm -hmm. and I think sometimes 
even when it comes to the job search, people start freaking out about looking for a new job. But I always say, well, first of all, looking for a new job doesn't mean you're quitting your other job. It just means you're looking for a new job. So just give yourself a timeline and you know, stick to your timeline as much as possible. Or if you're in a situation where it's like, I can't even focus on my job search because things are so bad at work, then it might be then, okay, so let's set, let's set yourself up for success. Is there enough money to support you if you quit your job? And how, then for how many months? Like, what does that actually look like? And again, giving yourself a timeline. Like maybe I've literally have had people tell me I'm okay for the next two years. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, okay. And part of me is like, so where's the worry? Where's the concern? Right. I think that's where, <laughs> but I think that's where people really need to, to be real with themselves. And, and even, you know, I'm saying these things, I've had those sim- same situations too. Like I've done, I've made, I've made stupid decisions in my career. And sometimes I still do. And I've also had the fear and I've also let myself get sucked into the collective unconscious. But I think it's really about when I was saying earlier, like, stop it. Yeah. That's what, sometimes that's how we have to speak to ourselves and be like, stop it. Yes. Yeah. You know, flip that around. And sometimes it doesn't have to be that harsh. Sometimes it does, but you need to see like, <laughs> right. Do I need a hard I stop? Yes. Do I need a hard stop yeah. on yes. my on what's happening in my mind, or am I, am I okay? And it's just like a little bit of a slip up here. Yeah, mm. my my daughter probably is gonna say something. I'm gonna call her out, but she's about to be 24, and <laughs> is I was a different mom when I had her, so I was like chasing that corporate ladder. So that's what she saw, and that's mm. kind of like where her mindset is. And like the girl is like thinking like I'm coming out of college and this is going to be perfect. I got a plan. Like I'm going to get this experience. I can get this job. And then like, she's taking a step back now, realizing that that job that she was in isn't, isn't really giving her what she needs to get to where she wants to go. And she was just so stressed out about leaving it to come back home to regroup. I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, you're 23. Promise you, <laughs> you have time. <laughs> I know, I know. Where and, you need to go. And I, and I literally had to tell her the same thing, like, like, just be quiet. Stop worrying, stop stressing. Like, if I, even at 23, was, I was a mom already for a couple of years, about five years by then, but, like, had that same type of drive as she did then, like, and no kids, like, you'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or I like to go back and, and, and remember, like, well, who, what was I thinking at 24, 25? I'm like, yeah, you, you did think like you were at the top of the world and you're an adult now. And it's like, time is ticking. And yes. you look back and you're like, gosh, I was so young and I had so many years ahead of me. And, and it is sad when you think of how much, like I used to, I was like stressing out like crazy back then. Um, and I'm thinking I should be stressing out now and I'm not. It's <laughs> a good thing. Right. Nah, nah, yeah. Get that. it out the way. Yeah. Get it out the way. It's normal yeah. human behavior, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just um, that pressure to have it all figured out. And no. Yes. And I am going to share a secret with you that was shared with me last year. <laughs> they were like, Priscilla, guess what? I'm like, what? They're like, you never figure it out, yeah. right? You never get to the end of the journey. And I was like, you know what? You're right. And it's just that we're continuously, and I see myself sometimes doing that. It's like, there's like the end goal, the end goal, the end goal. And it's, it has to be, no, what is like, what do you want to feel now? Present. Present. Right. Yeah. And that's the makes, secret. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, it makes me think about once I was in this, uh, this course and they were talking about um, just life and how we approach life. And they were telling us like, you know, it's basically the donkey and the, um, the I guess donkey trainer or whatever who has the carrot oh, in front of the yeah. donkey. And the donkey's trying to reach the carrot. And, you know, the carrot is literally, you're never gonna reach the carrot because every time you move forward, there's it the carrot forward. keeps moving, yeah. keeps moving, keeps moving. <laughs> yeah. And they were, they were saying that that's how we approach life with all of these goals that we have that it's be like, oh, when I buy the house, I'll feel successful. Or when I get married, I'll be happy. Or when I do this, or when I do that. And then we get there and it's like the next goal and the next goal and the next goal. And I've even seen myself doing that. And I've had to pause to be like, whoa, mm-hmm. wait a second. Like, what, what is it really that you want to create? And I think that that's for me, 2020 was really about that creation. And it was just like, okay, what do I really want to create in my life? And what's, and also like, what's really, really important. Like when COVID hit, I was living 
in New York. It had been a huge dream. It was like so exciting. It was like the fast life. And I, and I loved it. And I loved my experience in New York. And when COVID hit, it was like, okay, do I stay in New York? Do I go back to Canada? I had, um, I actually had to have a surgery and anyway, so I decided to come back to Canada and I realized like, yeah, maybe I needed, I needed that experience of New York. I think that everybody who has a dream, like go for it because yes, you just need to get it out of your system. Yeah. Yes. yes. Right? And there's, it's, a, it's a process with it and there's something you have to learn from exactly. it. Exactly. Yes. And so I come back to Canada to this like city I don't absolutely love <laughs> where there are lots of shoulds. But I, I just noticed like how calm it was and mm -hmm. I had so much access to nature. And I don't know if post COVID I'll still be here, but I just realized like, this is exactly what my soul needed right now. Mm -hmm. And I tell people go for the dream, just go for it because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how long you'll want to stay there for. I know I had a friend in New York. I am, um, she kept on like talking about how she wanted to move to LA and that was her dream and then just like last week she sends me a voice message and she's like hey I finally made it to LA uh -huh. and I hate it oh, but <laughs> and, that's all right but it was so she great would never have known exactly that. exactly <laughs> right and she so, would beat herself up like oh I should have done it I should have done it and now exactly. she really did like yeah it. yeah so she did it and now she's like I, and she's obviously really glad she did it because now she knows. She knows what the experience was. Yeah. She knows she didn't like it. And she's leaving. And I think that that's the important thing. Like a lot of people are so afraid to pursue their dreams because they're like, why don't I, don't, what if I don't like it? Then you'll know that you don't like it. And then it's out of your system and to the next. Yeah. yeah. And I know it's easier said it's than it. done. Mm -hmm. But seriously, like I think of had I not pursued my dream for New York and then this, all this COVID craziness happened. There would have always been that that disappointment that oh I didn't I I never went. Yeah. Yeah. It's um yeah, it's definitely I mean I think for me I was on that hamster wheel. I think Shauna you kind of messaged that earlier just being on that that rat race. It was the reorg, it was the kids, it was my son going off to college, it was all these things, but now, you know, sitting down and sort of digging into areas that I know that I needed to work on <laughs> my resume um, <laughs> and sort of getting the, the more clarity around, oh my God, this is the end of the world because the reorg is coming. And I have to admit, I, you know, I freaked out a little bit, you know, a lot of it um, on that stuff. So this, be, and I don't think if I wasn't home, if I wasn't, if we all weren't forced to take a pause and yeah. sit down. I would have probably not been in Alicia's group that day or maybe mm. not seen that post mm. and probably not said, you know what, I need to reach out. You know, mm. it was all those things we were, that was the thick of, that was when everything first shut down. That's like, true. That's late true. March, early April, and we we're just sitting here, doo, doo, chilling our right. thumbs. <laughs> and it's like, true. oh, let me go dig into something that is going mm -hmm. to boost my spirits, feed my self-care, right. build my confidence. Because I know right. I needed those things. And knowing is like half the battle. It's what you do with it. Like Jeanette said earlier about doing the work. So take action. Yes, take action. Yeah. And, and I, and I want to speak to you talking about freak out because freak out happens. I still freak out. I just had a week of freaking out and it's just like giving ourselves the space to freak out. And mm -hmm. it's yeah. like, I'm also still learning about all of these like human emotions and reactions and embracing them as such and being like, I'm human. This is normal. And I think even when, like we're talking about the confidence around pursuing the dream career. It's just that the confidence won't come by itself. There's going to, there's going to be fear. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I also have a podcast. It's the dream career podcast. And mm -hmm. I talk, I call the women that I invite on this podcast fearless. And to me, it, it's not that they're not afraid. It's that they were afraid, but went for it anyway. Yeah. Right. So I, when I do things that people are like, wow, you're such a risk taker. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. And I was freak like behind the scenes, I was freaking out. I was crying every day, <laughs> you know, but, but I, but I did it. Right. And then there was like this whole um, period of time where it's very, very, very uncomfortable. Sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have um, some reminders on my phone. Okay. Um, and um, there's like, yeah, there's huge space of discomfort. And 
it's about trusting. So a big piece of my method is about the trust in whatever it is you believe in that it's God or the universe or spirit. Yes. Um, and, you know, that, and that, that's hard and challenging too. It is. You know, it is. It's, it's very yeah. challenging to, to trust that there is a greater force out there that's guiding us in the right direction. That's um, making us maybe make choices <laughs> for our highest good. Even in, if in the moment we feel completely crazy, I'm literally talking about me right now. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and, and it's important to keep our eyes open because there are signs. And what I mean, keep our eyes open. It's that uh, spirit is going to send help our way and we need to be willing to ready. say yes to the help. Yeah. Ready right. and willing. Ready because and willing. A lot of people I see, you know, they're kind of trying to do it all by themselves. They're like, yeah, I want to change jobs. I can do it by myself. Or I want to figure out what I want to, what I really want to do. I can do it by myself. I'm done with or, that. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I'm like, yeah, you could do it by yourself. And it took me 10 years to figure out which career I really wanted to pursue. And do you really want to take 10 years or do you want to get this done in like <laughs> three to six months? Exactly. Okay. Yes, that wow, this is excellent. For, yeah. <laughs> for sure, I know. So Priscilla, you've dropped a lot of gems here today. Oh, this conversation is wonderful. We, we can probably can talk to you for like a whole day. day. Yes, <laughs> we <laughs> did. We have to do a part two or something in the future because this yes. is amazing. So if you have one takeaway for our audience today, what would you give them take away one and two where can people find you sure yeah take away take away one I, I always say it's all about the clarity mm -hmm. right really take I, I know like it can get a little bit restless to like sit you can start feeling restless to sit with yourself and really go into like that quiet space and you know if it's like a semi-meditation or kind of meditation that you need just to go within and I think that's the thing it's like you don't have to find that clarity by yourself because when you actually speak to someone, like I hear between the lines of what my clients are saying. Like, I don't know how I do it. People say stuff to me and I'm like, okay, so what I'm really hearing you say is this. And they're like, yes. I'm like, okay. And we don't always hear ourselves and we're in our head and our, you know, all the, cre we have so many thoughts the thoughts that are super important might actually be getting lost within all the other like random like repetitive thoughts right yeah. yes so and I where think, can like, people find you yeah where the clarity know? is important clarity. where can people yeah. find me so yeah. definitely um you can look for me on linkedin mm -hmm. and add me on linkedin and just a little tip when you're adding people on linkedin is actually you know put a little message letting them know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why you're connecting and you know why you want to connect and where you found out about them and uh, I, I, my, my website is mymaptohappiness.com. So you can also email me at info at mymaptohappiness.com. And I'm also on Instagram, even though I'm not as like, not like super active on Instagram, uh, but you can also follow me there. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. We thank you love so this much. conversation. This great. This been it was fun. It was fun. Page of notes and show awesome. notes, guys. We're I'm already like, who am I sending this podcast? Who, right, exactly. I have a whole <laughs> send it to myself <laughs> first. Yeah. yeah How about we start there? Yeah, we're gonna do And that. I just wanted to say, I I didn't want to offend anyone, any listeners who oh, are like no. very affected by COVID. You know, it's really my opinion that I'm sharing, and I just mm -hmm. want people to feel feel healthy, you know, healthy and happy, I think is like the most important thing. Cause that's, what's also going to open the door for you to focus on what's important for you right now. Yes. 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 Thank you, Priscilla. Thank wow. you. We, we really love appreciate this. your you presence. You are amazing. <laughs> amazing. Amazing to be you on here. Amazing. So thank, thank you, Linda, you. for introducing us. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> of course. Of course. I, I, yeah. My pleasure for sure. Shauna, do you want to tell our audience where they can hear this episode and also find us and we'll yes. the notes. Yeah. Yes, you can find us on YouTube, Twitter, IG, and the newest platform, Facebook. You can also go to our website, The Heart of Chat, join our mailing list so you don't miss any of our episodes for Meatful Mondays. And please come back next week and every week because it's going to be Fuego, baby. Come yes. back. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Priscilla. you, Priscilla. Thank Such you. a pleasure. Yeah. It was pleasure a pleasure to sure. chat with you, ladies. Yes. yes.